I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. I feel very grateful to feature such a wide spectrum of amazing guests who inspire all of us to strive for greatness. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. My special guest today is an outstanding man with great character, and he is the coordinator for Crime Stoppers here in Hawaii. He is Sergeant Chris Kim, and today we are going beyond law enforcement. Hey, Chris, good to have you. Thank you for having me. I feel so safe having the police here. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have so much to talk about today. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, tell me about your early years of your life. My early years, so I was actually born in South Korea, but when I was three months old, um, my parents immigrated here to Hawaii. Uh, my father was part of the, the military. He moved over first, okay. and eventually my mother and my older brother came over, and uh, years later, my younger brother was born. Wow. And then what schools and sports uh, did you play and attend? So I went to Alawai Elementary, okay. um, St. Patrick's for Intermediate, yeah. and I graduated from Kaimaki High School. Wow. So. My earlier years were more um, going fishing, yeah. playing sports, on, just with the neighborhood kids. Soccer. More like baseball, yeah. like football. Uh, and as I got into high school is when uh, I took up wrestling. Oh. So I wrestled from my sophomore to my senior year. And what about college? College, I started off at uh, Kapilani Community College uh, with the idea that I wanted to be a chef. I've always enjoyed cooking. Both my parents cooked very well. And I always had an interest in cooking. And then I realized that that should be a hobby. And my, one of my true passions at the time was just cars. I wanted to be a mechanic. So I transferred over to the Honolulu Community College where I took up uh, automotive mechanics. Wow, cool. Yeah. Well, I, I wish I could cook. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. Now, you have two beautiful daughters. Yes. Tell me about them. So I have Haley. Uh, she's 11, going to be 12. And Crystalline, who just turned 7. Uh, they are basically the light of my life and they're the ones that make me want to be better every day. Now, do you take them fishing too? I do. So you know what's funny is um, Haley was born and people were like, oh, you, you know, you've got to have another baby, but you've got to have a boy. Yeah. Um, Kristen came around, obviously I have two girls now. People are like, well, you got to have another one, but you got to have a boy. And I said, for what? And he says, you know, every dad wants a boy. And I says, well, girls can do just same amount of things that boys can do. And yeah. that's what I teach them. I empower them that there is nothing that you folks can't do that a boy can't do. I take them fishing. I take them to the beach. Um, we do martial arts together. So everything that a boy can do, my daughters can do. Completely agree, Chris. Yes. Now, what was your first job that you ever had in your life? My first job was almost kind of simultaneous. Um, when I was a freshman at Kamiki High School, yeah. I basically applied to clean the classrooms. So after school was done, I would go through all the classrooms and, and basically just clean them up like a janitor. Yeah. And shortly after, uh, I applied over at the um, Polo 76 auto service oh, yeah. where I was a gas attendant. I basically pumped gas. Uh, certain days I would pump gas and certain days I would clean classrooms. Wow, I like hearing that. Now, Chris, I wanna know, why did you end up becoming a police officer? I was actually going through college, Honolulu Community College, yeah. and some of my high school friends were like, hey, let's, let's take the uh, HPD exam. I always enjoyed watching the cops TV show. I was always intrigued, but I never thought that I would be a police officer. So, plus I had family friends that um, were in the department and I would hear the war stories and it always seemed interesting. But there was one night I was working as a valley in Waikiki where I heard this female screaming, and I had kind of looked up down the street, and I saw uh, this tourist being purse snatched and robbed. Uh, suspect grabbed the bag and took off running. It was almost like an instantaneous knee-jerk reaction where I, I chased after the guy. Yeah. Uh, he ended up getting apprehended, got arrested, and the tourist got her bag back. But Good. From there, I started kind of getting, I think, a little bit more interested. He took the test, and I ended up passing, and I am today. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Just a knee-jerk reaction. Yes. It's, you're born to do it. <laughs> well, now you're a sergeant, mm -hmm. and you're the coordinator of Crime Stoppers, mm -hmm. and you have a team of volunteers. Yes. Tell me about 
everything that's going on with Crime Stoppers right now. So Crime Stoppers, we're actually a nonprofit organization that was founded in 1981. Yeah. And what I tell people is that Crime Stoppers is basically, we're a resource. We are the link between the Honolulu Police Department, the community, and the media. Yeah. We basically solicit tips from the public and help the police department solve cases with those tips. And you guys also have, you're bringing awareness about animal cruelty as well. Yes. And you, you appear on the Pet Hui yes. um, pretty consistently now. Yeah. So tell me about that. So the Animal Crime Stoppers program was founded in 2001 in partnership with the Hawaii Humane Society and the Honolulu Police Department. And we were actually very fortunate that um, I was, I am friends with a former co-host, Denby Dung, and a current co-host, Dara Dung, yeah. who were gracious enough to introduce me to Ron Darby, who was the, the show's producer. and very passionate about um, protecting our, our, our pets. And I've been fortunate enough to now have um, regular segments uh, on the show. And we're able to promote animal crime stoppers and fight animal cruelty and, and basically just um, educate the public. Yeah. Well, Dara and Denby Dung, I mean, they're, they're amazing people. Yes, and yes. I saw that, how that puppy got buried in the sand. Mm -hmm. And then now the, the puppy uh, it had a full recovery yes. and just got uh, adopted. Yes. What, 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 what more can you tell me about the puppy? Uh, so my understanding, the puppy Lealoha is, is doing well, recovered very well. Um, it's unfortunate that this incident happened, yeah. but I think the silver lining to this is that there's a lot of awareness now out there about animal cruelty and there are more eyes and ears now. Totally. I like that. Mm -hmm. And Chief Lee Donahue, I had him on my show uh, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Such an honorable man, such, I mean, he has great respect from all of us. Mm -hmm. And he's the president of Crime Stoppers. Yes. And you know him for a long time. Yes. Tell me your thoughts about Coach uh, Chief Lee. So coincidentally, when I joined the Honolulu Police Department in 1998, uh, Chief Don, you had just taken over. And if I'm not mistaken, my recruit class, 131st recruit class, was his second recruit class. And, you know, he basically swore my class in. and. Fast forward 21 years later uh, to present day, and he becomes president of Crime Stoppers. Yeah. So essentially, I started off my career with Chief Donahue, and now I'm at the tail end of my career, mm -hmm. and I'm finishing it off with Chief Donahue. Yeah, and I told Chief Lee, I said, man, you know, he seems like he's the busiest he's ever yeah. been right now. I don't yeah. know how he does everything. But he's just very passionate about, you know, being, uh, providing safety for the community. Yeah. What character traits do you most admire from Chief Lee? Very personable. Yeah. He, he has a lot of respect. Um, see, when you look at him, everything he does and says is very genuine. And that's what I really like about him. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I love that. He's very honest. I yes. mean, he has great positive energy. Yes. He cares. Yes. Yeah. No, I love that. And Chief Susan Ballard mm -hmm. is doing a great job leading mm -hmm. the, the police department. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about your thoughts about Chief Susan. I think she's done a wonderful job. Um, prior to her taking over, I had, I had very little interaction with her. You know, yep. obviously, you know, there's over 2,000 of us. Um, but since she's taken over, I've, I've had interactions with her. I like what she's doing. I like where she's taking the department. Um, she is basically listening to the lower rank. Yeah. Um, basically, open ears. You know, she's willing to, to receive criticism or how can we make the department better? And she's asking it. In the lower ranks, and it's just my own personal opinion. Yeah, and she's definitely, I mean, from what, what we all see, I mean, she's taking the police department in the right direction, and yes. she's very respected, very, you know, I, I hold her in high yes. esteem. Yes. And um, I want to ask you this, you know, about those, the water dousing of mm -hmm. the police officers, mm -hmm. the, the video that's, you know, been mm -hmm. shown in New York, I mean, very sickening. Yes. Tell me your thoughts about that. Wow. Um, so when I first saw that video, exactly what you said, very sickening. Very sickening that we now live in a society where they feel like it's okay to disrespect police officers like that. Um, it's, it's very disheartening to, to see that. Um, and and we're, I'm hoping that things will change. I'm hoping that that incident will bring some awareness and just open people's eyes. Yeah. And Chris, you know, they, there was another video that showed like little kids with water guns shooting the police officers as well. And I'm thinking, you know, the parents are there obviously pouring buckets of water on the, on the 
police officers and mm -hmm. the children, the kids are just mimicking the parents. Yes. I mean, and, and you're a parent. You know, yeah. How does that make you feel? It's, it's once again, it's very disheartening, you know, that the, that the parents are, are, are setting the wrong example for the children, yeah. you know, to, to disrespect the police officers. And it, they're police officers, but at the same time, um, they're people. Yeah. You know, they have feelings, you know, they, they were obviously, they must have been, I would imagine, you know, humiliated, um, upset about the whole situation. Yeah. And for Crime Stoppers, Chris, you know, you, you've been doing a lot of presentations mm -hmm. um, to schools mm -hmm. and organizations. Mm -hmm. I mean, tell me some of, the, some of the places you've been to so far. So the Student Crime Stoppers program was founded in 1997 in partnership with the Department of Education and the Honolulu Police Department. Yeah. And basically, we are a resource for students to take a proactive approach in helping to keep their communities and their schools safe. And we've managed to have great success with the program. We were able to solve um, sex assault cases bullying issues, prevented suicides. And what it is, we just go and we speak to the kids about um, just how to be an upstander. Yeah. You know, when you see something, say something. You know, be a positive role model. Yeah. And we given that avenue to report things anonymously because I think kids nowadays, they always, they're afraid of being known as a rat or the snitch. Mm. You know, but with us, they're able to disclose information or give us tips completely anonymously. What are the biggest challenges that you see um, right now with Crime Stoppers and how you're trying to take it to the next level? I don't know if there's so much challenges. It seems like uh, people are more receptive and more aware of Crime Stoppers now where we're being constantly invited now to, to speak at various organizations, schools, Rotary Clubs. Um, so I, I, I don't, at this moment, I can't really see any challenges. Yeah. Um, but I'm very, Happy to see that people are more responsive now to Crime Stoppers. You know, in terms of the, you know, your fellow police officers, what what is the what is the best thing about being a police officer, and what is the worst thing? Would would you say? The best thing about police officer, it's just a, a lot of us. We're not here for the for the pay. Yeah. Um, we we're here because you've got to have it in you to to have a positive impact within your community. Um, self fulfillment. Yeah. You know that, that that's 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 huge yeah. you know, to be a police officer. Um, some of the challenges. Yeah. As you said earlier, you know the, the water dousing incidents. I think the lack of respect for police officers now. Uh, we're constantly being criticized, constantly being watched. Um, sometimes it's, it's it's disheartening. You know, just the amount of disrespect um, that people. And I'm not I'm not saying everybody. Yeah. You know, because obviously that there is a huge support for law enforcement. But it's just with social media, people yeah. posting things like that, it's very disheartening. Yeah, and you know, that water dousing, I mean, people have to respect the police officers and they have to respect the military. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's logical, it's common sense. I mean, you guys and the military are protecting us. Yes. And we have to respect that. Mm -hmm. And when I see stuff like that, I mean, I, that's so shameful, that's so embarrassing mm -hmm. that people would stoop down to that level mm -hmm. to do that. Um, we're going to continue going beyond law enforcement, but we're going to take a quick break, Chris. Mm -hmm. And uh, great having you here right awesome. now. Awesome. Happy to be here. Thank you. You're watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Sergeant Chris Kim. We will be back in a quick minute. Hey, aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us and I uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you. And uh, aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is the coordinator for Crime Stoppers here in Hawaii. 
is Sergeant Chris Kim, and today we are going beyond law enforcement. Chris, I want to ask you your thoughts about my book, Beyond the Lines. So I was fortunate enough that I had a former B partner uh, call me up and say, hey, Chris, you know, I have this book for you. I, you know, I really want you to read it. I think, that they think it's going to help you. And once I started to read it, it, a lot of things in the book really hit home. But I think what I really like about it is how you talk about personal life experiences in there. You know, this is actually firsthand knowledge coming from you. It's not some made up thought. You know, yeah. this, is, this is actual true stories. Um, but you give a lot of, um, as far as leadership wise, yep. a lot of good insight. And for me as a supervisor um, and a quarter for the Crime Stoppers where we have a team of 25 volunteers right now and I'm able to, to, to utilize a lot of those ideas. Um, I want to give you a funny story. You, you mentioned something there about make everyone matter. Yeah, yeah. You know, so when I, sometimes when I have my daughters like, we'll stop by McDonald's and uh, have that app for buy one, get one free or something. Yeah. I'll buy um, an extra burger or whatever it comes with and there's a certain gender I see at the police department and if I get that free thing, then I'll go and, and I'll give it to them. Mm -hmm. So my daughter, I just asked, you know, last week, like, Dad, you know, why do you always give that janitor um, food? Yeah. And I says, you know what? I said, because his job is just as important as Daddy's job. His job is just as important as the chief's job because if we didn't have the janitor, then the police, the, the police station would be dirty. Yeah. So basically everybody has a role. And I'm, I'm teaching my kids that everybody matters and you have to make them feel that way. And I do that with my volunteers too. You know, since I've taken over, um, I've sat with them. I, I, I get their feedback. How can we make the environment better for you folks? You know, Crime Stoppers, Honolulu is one of the few, if not the only program that utilizes a team of volunteers who, who answer calls. A lot of the other Crime Stoppers programs nationwide utilize call centers. Ah. So we are one of the very few, if not the only, that utilize a team of volunteers. And I want to make sure that they're happy, you know, because they're a huge integral part the success of how Crime Stoppers operate. That's why you're a great leader, Chris. You, you know, I mean, you, everyone does matter. Mm -hmm. Everyone plays a role. And everyone wants to feel like they're contributing and making a difference. Mm -hmm. Now, going on beyond, you know, with your team of volunteers, what specific things are you trying to implement in your culture of excellence with them? Just the fact that making them feel that they matter. Yeah. You know, so I, I ask, you know, how you know, how can we make the environment better for you? You know, they, and our numbers show. So basically, once I got feedback from them, okay, Sarge, I think we need this, I think we need that. It'd be nice to have some snacks or some refreshments, or so we started doing this, started trying to make them happy, and the amount of volunteer hours that they're logging in now is, is, is a lot more than in the past. Wow. You know, so I think the, gr the greatest thing is making sure that, although I'm the coordinator and people think, you know, I'm the one that, that people typically see out in the public. But you know what? It's actually all these other people behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, I have my volunteer, I have my clerk typist, and I have Glenda, Officer Glenda Cabras, Anna Takashi Gomes, who's my clerk typist. They matter yeah. just as much as I do. And my team of volunteers, they matter too, as well as our board of directors. So there are a lot of people behind the scenes, and I make sure that they all know, that they're all um, appreciated. And earlier you talked about how Chief Susan listens. Yes. And you listen as well. And it's great to get the ideas and you know, how can we find ways to do things better and have different solutions to problems? So yes. that's awesome. Yeah. Now, Chris, I want to ask you, have you had like a major adversity in your life? Mm -hmm. And how did you overcome that? I think like everybody else out there, we all have adversities and challenges in life. But for me personally, back in 2016, yeah. um, I started a very um, a year long divorce process. Hmm. It's not something, it was, it was hard. Um, I tried to, I wanted to keep the marriage obviously because of my two kids. Yeah. Um, but after trying for a couple months, I realized that I, I needed to take control of my life. And I went through the divorce process and I honestly have to say that that was the, the hardest thing that I ever went through. Mm -hmm. um, just emotionally, physically, mentally, uh, it was difficult. And a year later, you know, when it had ended, I, I was still bitter about a lot of things and upset, but then I realized that it wasn't doing me any good, you know, holding on to those feelings because it's basically eating, eating me alive. Um, so I decided to change my mindset, you know, start being more positive. You know, someone had told me, you know, the best thing about being at rock bottom is that there's only one place and that's up. 
And that's what I kept telling myself. Then fortunately, I was surrounded by a good support group uh, between my family, friends, and coworkers where they, they basically saw me through all of that. Wow. And then you, you told me before that you had a, like a high point that you thought was a high point in your life where you had a you know, new car, you had a new house, and what happened? So before my divorce, um, I was actually a detective in the homicide detail. Okay. Um, we, we, we were very busy um, with different types of cases. You know, the opportunity to make money was there, but with that opportunity, you know, it, it took a lot of time um, making the money. I had a new house, I had a new boat, I had a new truck. From the outside, it looked like I had it all. But looking back on it, I realized that it was, these were just material things. Yeah. I think I was still missing that fulfillment inside of me. And it's weird because now you fast forward to present day where I, I don't have the house, I don't have a boat, you know, I don't have a truck. You know, I live in a small little apartment now, mm -hmm. you know, but yet I feel like the amount of self-fulfillment that I have now is, is it's, it's huge. It's way greater than, it, than it's ever been. Yeah. No, I get that. I understand that. Chris, who is someone that inspires you? My mother. Um, she, she's a hard worker. Um, she still works in the restaurant business. You know, she, she's 67 years old. You know, when she first immigrated to Hawaii from Korea, she, she didn't speak a lick of English. You know, but she, she's always been a hard worker, um, as well as my father. My father has since passed away in 2001. But looking back on it, they both were very hard workers, and, and I try and live up to that. Um, very kind of a, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. They, they, my mother inspires me. Oh, I, love, I love hearing that. What's the, what's the most valuable piece of advice you've ever received? I've received so many. I've been very fortunate that I've been surrounded by good people and I've, I've received so many good advice. But one thing that still resounds to me, um, one of my former sergeants, when my first daughter Haley was born, I was a patrol officer in the Alamona area and you know, I was still kind of young. Um, and one day he kind of, we had a deep discussion because he was a single father. I never thought that I would be a single father. No one ever expects to get divorced. but. One thing he told me at the time, as, a, as a, he was a single father, he says, Chris, one piece of advice I want to give you is that you want to live your life. If, if your life was to play out in front of your children on a movie screen, would you be proud of what was playing on the movie screen? Would you allow your children to see what was playing out on the movie screen? And that always till this day resounds to me where I try and do things where if my children were able to see or if my life was ever put on the screen, would my kids be proud? Yeah. And I try and live my life that way. Wow. Oh, great advice. Yeah. yeah. I want to ask you, Chris, you know, um, we've all been on teams before, mm -hmm. you know, and we know if the coach or the leader is good mm -hmm. or bad. Mm -hmm. What do you think the best leaders do? They listen. They listen. Um, they listen before they speak. They, they, they need to hear what the employees are feeling and take that into account on how to better the business, establishment, organization, whatever have you. Just listen to employees. Listen to the people that matter. Yeah. Make them feel important. In my book, I talk about listen first and speak last. Yes. And it sounds like that, that's what you do yes. a, a whole lot. I try to. Now, as a parent, what kind of values are you trying to instill in your two daughters? I'm trying to teach them that. Someone had told my children, my kids came home one day and said that, your daddy's job is junk. Your daddy doesn't make a lot of money. Such and such's job is better because they make a lot of money. So when my six-year-old, she was six at the time, told me that, and I looked at the 11-year-old um, and I says, well, I'm gonna teach you guys something. It's not about money. Life isn't about money. Um, yes, I don't make a lot of money. Policemen don't make a lot of money. It, but it's not about the money. It's about doing something that you enjoy. First of all, you have to enjoy what you do. You have a lot of people who make a lot of money, but do they really enjoy what they do? You know, so I tell them is that it's some, finding a job, whatever it is, make sure you enjoy it. Make sure it brings you happiness. At the same time, you do something positive. You know, and I said, you know, I don't make a lot of money, but I'm trying to do something positive, and I'm happy with what I'm doing. What I'm doing. At the end of the day, when you passed away, you're not going to take these tens of millions with you. Mm -hmm. you know, but the, 
the lives that we impact, the legacy that we leave for our children and for other people, you know, that lives on forever. That continues on, you know, the knowledge, you know, it's not about the money. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to teach them. Yeah, I, I talk about finding your passion mm -hmm. and that's really what it's about. Yes. And everyone has to feel like, you know, they're finding their passion, finding mm -hmm. their greatness, and then really make a difference in society, mm -hmm. contribute to society mm -hmm. in a greater way. Mm -hmm. Don't just take up space. Yes. So what do you feel, Chris, is your purpose in life? My purpose in life is just, I think I found it, is just try to better society, better, um, kind of empower the, the children of Hawaii, you know, and, and that, with, with the Student Crime Stoppers Program, but not, it's just to be a better human being, be a positive role model within the community, do something, you know, like you said, instead of taking up space, do something. Yeah, and you're doing that because I see you all over. <laughs> you're on the news, yeah. you're on the pet hui, you're, you're everywhere, yeah. and you are making an impact because, I mean, I, I know that you're really busy doing what you do. Yes. Uh, but because you're everywhere and busy, I mean, it's, you're bringing awareness and attention mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. all of these situations. I mm -hmm. mean, it would be great if we can look left and look right and we see police officers all over the place. Mm -hmm. That's gonna make our society even better. Yeah. Now, what is a future goal of yours personally? What is something that you want to do, but you just haven't done it, done it yet personally? Maybe one day travel. Mm -hmm. That'll come with retirement later on down the line. You know, maybe just travel and just kind of see the world. To where? I've always been kind of like a beach, ocean type of person. Yeah. So maybe oh, Maldives. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, that would be <laughs> cool. Know, Tahiti or you know, one of those bungalows overlooking the ocean. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I get that. I want to go too. <laughs> Chris, before we wrap, I want to ask you one more question. Mm -hmm. What gives you fulfillment now? Easy question. I mean, easy answer. Um, from, easy for me to answer. It's, uh, it's spending time with them. Every moment um, that I have with them. Sometimes as police officers, we, we, we see a lot of negatives. Um, but my children actually see, I mean, my children help me see um, just the good things. You know, they're always so innocent. And um, yeah, just spending time with my kids. So every opportunity that I have with my kids, I've shared custody with my kids, but just spending time with them. You know, and it's something as simple as, like yesterday, we, we went to Almona Beach Park, grabbed some, some poles and some bread, and we were out there just catching some tilapia, you yeah. know, just catch and release. But that just gave me so much fulfillment, and, you know, that, that boosts my energy up for the week. Yeah. You know, so I look forward to times like that. Well, Chris, I appreciate you being on the show today. Thank you. And uh, sharing your insights. I mean, you are definitely a great dad. Thank you. A great police officer and a great coordinator for Crime Stoppers. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com, and my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Sergeant Chris and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. 